Hi there, GIF Gaffers. I'm Giles, and I've teamed up with GIF Gaff, the mobile network run by you, to host one of our first GIF Gaff Academy tutorials. Today, I'm going to be guiding you through an introduction to coding, and I'm going to do that from my office upstairs. Before we explore how to code, there are a couple of other questions that we need to answer. One of them is, why do we code in the first place? And the other question is, what does it mean to code? What is code? When you're coding with a computer, what are you actually doing? And to answer that, we need to consider in brief how a computer works. And we're gonna do that with the help of this piece of string. If we simplify what a computer does right down to the basics, all it does is take some input, process that input in some way, and then output what it's processed. And as coders, what we're interested in is that middle section, is in that processing. So coders just provide a set of instructions for the computer to follow, which it can do very, very quickly, to tell it how to process the information, the input that it receives, so that it can output, hopefully, what we want it to output. But there's a slight catch. And the catch is that in spite of all their sophistication, computers really only understand two things. And those two things are zero and one, the two binary digits. And incidentally, you might have heard the term bit. Well, bit is just short for binary digit. That's how the computer sees the world. So if we want to explain the world to a computer, we first have to convert it to zeros and ones. The reason that the computer exists in this binary world, in this world of ones and zeros, is because the brains of the computer, the CPU, the central processing unit, is powered by electricity. And it contains lots and lots and lots of tiny little switches. And these switches can only exist in one of two states. They can either be off or on, just like a light switch. If they're off, the computer attributes the value of zero to them. And if they're on, it attributes the value of one. Now, by combining lots and lots and lots of these tiny little switches, all in different states, the computer can represent any number that it wants to represent. The problem is for humans, because we don't think very well in binary. Now, if we want to tell the processor what to do, if we want to tell it how to process the information that we're delivering to it, we would have to tell it how to do that in machine code, in machine language, in ones and zeros. But fortunately, we don't have to do that. And the reason we don't have to do that is because of a term you'll hear a lot if you go further into studying coding and computer science, and that's abstract. This problem has been taken care of by someone else. It's been abstracted away. So when we tell the computer what to do, when we give it our set of instructions, our program, that program is converted by some other software that we don't have to worry about for us, and it's converted into ones and zeros as a set of instructions for the processor. What about the string? Why the string? What's the relevance of this? Well, really, it's just to give you an idea of the speed of a computer, of your computer, of the device you have in your pocket, whether it's a computer or a phone or my computer, for example, which can carry out three billion operations a second. Now, when you learn to program, when you learn to code, you're harnessing a machine like this one that is capable of doing three billion little tasks per second. Now, it's impossible to think what that means because three billion is such a large number. But if we think of it in terms of the speed of light, now in one second, light will travel round the earth seven and a half times. That's how fast light is. In the time it takes my computer to carry out one operation, light will have traveled about that far. That's what the string is for. It's to visualize just how powerful these machines are. And when you learn to code, you're harnessing that power and getting it to work for you. It's very different from having a machine that you download software onto that, that does a job for you. That's also useful. But when you can code, you can automate processes. And this is what code is often used for. You can automate processes that you want this machine or a machine like it or your phone to carry out on your behalf. 
at that sort of speed. Now that's why computers are so useful. They're like infinitely variable tools. We can program them to do whatever we want them to do and they will do them repetitively and without error if we've programmed them properly uh, and at high speed to achieve things that we couldn't possibly achieve if we didn't have computers. And that's why they've revolutionized the way we live. And that's why computers are involved in everything. I really do mean everything. Every electronic device or digital system that you interact with is being run by code, whether that's a smartphone or a computer or a smart TV or the automated systems in a car or a plane or on, on a website, the interactions with a website, they're being controlled by code. The applications that are running on those websites are also being controlled by code. Uh, the network that enables you to connect to that website, code is controlling that too. It is everywhere and it really influences our lives. And so it's really useful to understand how it works and it's extremely useful um, to learn how to do it. It's, it's very rewarding to be able to code. It helps make you a better problem solver. It makes you think more logically, but practically as well, it's a very useful skill to have and it's one that's definitely in demand with employers. Now you have a much better idea of what coding is and, and what it enables you to do. But how do you learn to code? That's the next question. And you may have done some searching online. And if you have, you'll find that there are lots of different languages that you you can learn lots of different programming languages and you might not know which is the best path for you. It can be a little bit confusing. So what I'd like to do in this next section is show you the way. I'd like to give you a roadmap that you can follow that will get you coding as quickly as possible. We'll look at which language to learn because it can be very confusing to know which one to choose. We'll look at skills that I think you need to acquire. We'll look at resources and where to find really good resources online. We'll also look at where to go for help online um, and other things that you should be considering whilst you're going through this process. So let's do that now. I have two recommendations when it comes to which programming language to learn. Now, now the first is Scratch. Now Scratch was designed for eight to 16 year olds, but it's, it's been used by a much wider age group than that. And what it does, it's a sort of graphical user interface. So it enables you to pick up the concepts of programming without having to worry about the syntax. And you can really create some interesting projects in Scratch. So it's a very good way to dip your toe into the water of coding without it being too daunting, but it really will enable you to grasp some of the ideas uh, and problem solving strategies behind programming. So it's definitely worth taking a look. If you're looking for something a little bit more serious, then I definitely recommend Python as your first main programming language. Now, there is a caveat. I have a YouTube channel called Python Programmer. I do most of my programming in Python, so I may be a little bit biased. I accept that. Python is a, definitely a really good first choice, and I'll tell you why. Um, it is domain agnostic, so it can be used in lots of different settings. So it's used you know, to run web servers, others it's used to develop apps, it's used in data science, it has a lot of different uses. Um, so it's very versatile. Now you've decided that you want to learn Python, what do you do next? Well, you have to get it onto your computer or you have to access um, a website that enables you to run Python. So if you search for Python in Google or any other search engine, it'll bring up the Python homepage. Go and visit that, follow the instructions to download Python onto your machine. Sometimes installing Python can be a little difficult. And if you're having problems installing it, then I would suggest you go to a website called uh, replit, R-E-P-L dot I-T, uh, and you can run Python there. So pick the Python option and you're good to go. Once you've done that, you need to start learning Python. A good place to start is the Python documentation. They have a tutorial on there, which you can follow. You need to make sure you understand certain things like the print function in Python. You need to understand what a variable is. Is. You need to understand what conditionals are. All of these things you can search for online. You need to understand what a loop is, a for loop and a while loop. Uh, and then you need to look at other things like lists. And then you need to look at functions and how to import modules in Python. Once you get to that point, I think you'll have a very good idea of what to do next. And 
The way to progress, the best way to progress is to start trying to solve problems. So start searching online for Python problems that you can solve uh, and solve simple ones to begin with and then work on the more complex ones. And then you can start trying to write Python, little Python programs that will solve problems for you. You can start working on your own projects. And if you do that, that will get you to the point where you know where to go. You'll know where to go after that. You're going to need to look at object oriented programming and how to define a class in Python. You're going to need to look at data structures and algorithms and all of that comes later. But you need to master these first few things at the beginning in order to be able to do that stuff afterwards. And so that is the is the path that I would start on if I were you. And I think if you do that, you will learn the basics of Python and the basics of coding really very quickly. And that will put you in a position to know where to go from there. Now, I said I'd show you also where to go for help. There is um, a site which once you start having problems and you start looking for solutions to problems uh, with Python that I'm sure you'll find anyway, but it's called Stack Overflow. Uh, and on there they have answers to thousands of problems that people at all levels of programming have had with Python and other languages too. So you'll be spending quite a lot of time on there um, and really by using Python to solve problems and figuring out what the solutions to those problems are where you've gone wrong and spending time on sites like Stack Overflow, you will really gain an in-depth understanding of how to use Python and that will put you well on your way to being a coder. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has inspired you to start coding. Visit the GIFGAF Academy if you'd like to learn more about coding. You can also visit my YouTube channel or drop me a line on Twitter if you have any questions.